Sometimes you'll see an equation with lots of numbers and letters. You might be intimidated and not know where to begin. And then you remember your old friend, back solving. The hero with the cape who knows the quickest way out of any problem. Whenever you're given a question with an equation where you need to find the value of a single variable, you can use your answer choices to back solve. Let's look at an example. Our question reads, if x is an integer and y is equal to 7x plus 11, what is the greatest value of x for which y is less than 50? Your answer choices are a7, b6, c5, d4, and e3. We know we're looking for x. Now we need a target number. Since the question tells us that we want y to be smaller than 50, we'll know that we found the right answer choice if our value for y is 50 or less. Usually, we start with the middle number so that we can go up or down depending on whether our answer is too low or too high. But whenever a question asks, what's the greatest, start by checking the biggest. And if it asks, what's the least, you guessed it, start by checking the smallest number. Okay, back to our problem. Since this question is asking for the greatest value of x, we'll start with choice A. To check A, we have to plug in x equals 7 to the expression 7 times x plus 11. If we do that, then that expression becomes 7 times 7 plus 11. Let's bring up our handy calculator and plug it in. So 7 times 7 plus 11. When you hit enter, you'll get 60. Now ask yourself, is 60 smaller than 50? No, obviously. So let's move on to b, which is 6. When we plug in 6 for x, our expression becomes 7 times 6 plus 11. If you use your master calculator skills, you'll find out that this equals 53. Is 53 smaller than 50? Nope. Let's plug in 5, which is answer choice C, for x. That way we get 7 times 5 plus 11. And again, if we enter this into our handy-dandy calculator, it will tell us that this equals 47. Bingo! Finally, 47 is indeed smaller than 50. We can cross out D and E because we're looking for the greatest value for X, and they're both smaller than 5. Let's circle our big winner, which is answer choice C. Man, does that feel good. So now you see how backsolving comes to the rescue with an equation where you're asked to find a variable. Okay, now it's your turn. We're giving you a pause and solve problem so you can try one on your own. Grab a sheet of scratch paper and pencil. When I say pause, you'll pause the video and work through this back solving problem on your own. When you're done, restart the video and we'll go through it together. Here's the problem. For what value of z is the equation 4.4z plus 2.13 equals 15.21 minus 1.6z true? Ready, set, pause. And we're back. Now let's go over the problem. Even if you got the right answer, we want to make sure you solved it the right way so you're set for the real test. Let's underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. We have an equation where we need to find the value of a single variable z, so this is a great opportunity to back solve. We'll start by plugging in the middle number, answer choice c. We'll replace the z's in the equation with 2.18. If the left side equals the right side, then we'll know we have the right answer. Let's do some work on our calculators. We get 9.592 plus 2.13 equals 15.21 minus 3.488, which gives us 11.722 equals 11.722. And what do you know? That's the right answer. We didn't need to do any difficult algebra. All we had to do was back solve using the answer choices and our trusty calculator. Now keep practicing and you'll be ready to knock any scary looking equation down to size.